Hi, I'm Ken Mingus. Welcome back to Mingus on Tech, where we talk about what's hot and what's not in technology. I've got Brandon and Keith here with me today, and we're going to talk about roller coasters? <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait. Virtual reality and roller okay, coasters. Okay, thank you. So yeah. there is a tech angle here to the roller coaster story du jour. Yeah, the last time I was here, we you know we talked about kind of the Google Cardboard stuff. Yep. Since then, I apparently have become the VR reporter for you the are. world. You are. Uh, I did a follow-up piece about how uh, businesses and other non-gaming companies are getting into VR. Right. And then Brandon and I stumbled across the fact that this uh, Six Flags. This just sounds like a scam to go to Six Flags. You know, I mean, yeah. Please. I like roller coasters. This is, this, is, you went on to, this is a work thing, right? It was it a was. work thing, yeah. All right. So this is, okay, but just to set the scene, yep. Six Flags, so Massachusetts. Six, yep, Six Flags teamed up with Samsung. Okay. Uh, it, they did a, this strategic um, partnership marketing agreement yep. where... They added virtual reality to their existing Superman roller coaster. Now, okay. I, I didn't realize this, but the Superman coaster at Six Flags is like the world's tallest. Well, not the world's tallest. But it's the world's tallest, fastest VR coaster now. Okay. Um, there so are wait. There are other VR coasters out there. Yeah. So okay. in the course of discover, uh, discovering this, when we we're creating the video and then and then writing the article, yeah. uh, there's this German company called VR Coaster that does that adds virtual reality components to existing coasters. Okay. Um, so then they partnered up with Six Flags, and Six Flags opened like five or six of them all at the same time. In the U.S.? In the U.S. Okay. And, um, and they also worked with Marvel yeah. Comics. Uh, DC Comics. Or DC Comics. Oh, too. Sorry. Ooh. Ooh, dis. <laughs> sorry, we're Comics, sorry. Yes. We're sorry. Do not hate us. Okay, it's a mistake. Comics, DC Comics. DC Comics, Superman. right. To get um, to get the licensing for to use the Superman and Lex yeah. Luthor as part of the virtual reality. That's part experience. of the whole experience. It is, is the, yeah. Okay. So basically, they have a helmet uh, when you when you're the, lining the goggle up, things. Yeah, that you put it's, on. it's a Samsung Gear VR, and you put the headset on. Okay. Uh, it's got a fo you know Galaxy S7 phone. Um, it reads a QR code at the back of, on the back of the seat in front of you, yeah. and then that gets sent via Bluetooth to this control box in the middle of the train, and then. Inside your helmet, you're now riding a roller coaster so you, physically. Do you see a roller? Do you see like no. it's, it's not augmented? It, the whole thing yeah, is it's, like yeah, you're you in a cartoon. On and You've entered a, a cartoon basically. It, it's a completely immersive experience. When you put this headset on, you can't even tell you're really on a roller coaster anymore. Okay. It's all you see is is the screen, and you've entered this Superman world. And right. you can look now, all now, around. It's 360 degrees. Yeah. 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 Now, now, technically, you're riding on a sky train. In, okay. in Metropolis, okay. and then you know, like like which all which in and of, of itself sounds good. That sounds yeah, like fun. Yeah, well, it, you would think it would be a nice leisurely ride, but then all of a sudden, <laughs> oh, the train, all hell breaks yeah, loose, right? Lex Luthor attacks. And, okay, and, you know, and then all of a sudden, now you're physically in the ride, and 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 you're going up. You're you know, you're kind of going up on the roller coaster. Um, you sort of feel that. In, in the virtual space, yeah. uh, the, the real fun begins when you do that drop. Yeah. And then it feels like you're falling, you know, into Because it's city. like into open space, You're, you're like right? going to fall on the ground, and then Superman kind of rushes in and saves you. Yeah. And then they start fighting, and it, it, just, it just becomes a wild ride after that. So, all right, so... <laughs> I'm not a roller coaster rider. I will. I will tell you that right yeah. now. I've jumped out of a plane before, but I will not ride a roller coaster. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. I have another story, different time. Um, so. You've got the VR going, you've got the goggles on, and basically the entire ride, you're seeing things projected in front of you, and Superman yes. is saving the, the roller coaster. So, you, you ride roller coasters anyway. I do. Yeah, VR, I'm a right? fan of roller coasters. So, what was the experience like? Well, I thought, like I said, it was it was a completely immersive experience, so yeah. it is actually a pretty intense ride even without the vr on it and then when you have the vr on it there's a lot going on it's almost i thought it was almost a little bit of sensory overload okay it's, it's like there's a lot going on you're watching it you're on the roller coaster it's going 77 miles an hour you're going down a 220 foot drop um <clears throat> i Nightmare. I got a little bit queasy actually <laughs> doing the vr and i don't get queasy on roller coasters yeah. normally so I think the VR might have been a little bit much for me, yeah. but I think Keith enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I, again, I'm a, I'm a little older than Brandon, so my experience... <laughs> and that <laughs> makes a difference. Now. Well, because so my you experience kids, with roller you coasters... kids and you're crazy. Oh, stop. <laughs> my experience with roller coasters these days are I get tense when I'm riding a roller coaster okay. because I'm anticipating too. either a drop or a turn or something going to bang my... If I bang my... I bang my head on roller coasters and yeah. it almost gives me like a little concussion okay. or a headache the rest of the day <laughs> or... You know, and so I'm, I'm a lot more wary about where my body is when I'm on a roller coaster. Yeah. I think with the VR, all of that went away and I, and I had... I, I actually... It was just a fun ride I in a virtual world. I loosened up more and, and didn't... 
I, I think when I tense up on roller coasters now, that's what's helping cause the injuries. Okay. Because I'm so worried about that next that drop, hit something or, or that or I'm gonna, you know, it's, I'm gonna whip around my head, and, and that's gonna bang into the back. So, but you know, you you sort of let that all go with the VR space. Now they were also telling us that people that are scared of heights. Yeah. Uh-huh. When they've got the VR helmet on, they don't realize how high up they are because, yeah. again, it's all virtual. It's it's, you're in a cartoon. Right. And so sort you don't realize that you're 220 feet up in the air, uh, which causes a lot of people to get freaked out about uh, roller coasters. Like, what what about roller coasters don't you like? I think it's just the going up and then the swooping down. Yeah. It's that it's, it's the, the physical sensations. I You know, I played around with some of the VR, the, the Google VR um, mm-hmm. Ocular things we're right. looking at at one point, and having tried different things with it, I actually got a little queasy just from regular sort of. I mean, this was like you know the New York Times stories that we were talking about last time, and just because you get so used to sort of looking around and but but what you're seeing doesn't really match where you are physically in the world, right? Um, and I remember afterwards, I was like, oh, I feel a little you know. Yeah, the so one I get the, the quiz, one queasy time, thing. the one time I got queasy was when the physical coaster stops. The virtual coaster keeps going. That like would, at the end of the ride, I would think that would throw your brain and off. And that big threw time. my brain off, and I was like, "Whoa!" But you know, if they hadn't have stopped the coaster, well, and I think they have to because they're loading up two coasters at the same time. Yeah. So usually you stop. If you if you didn't stop, um, it probably wouldn't have made me as queasy. I think there's a bigger story there too that that I think Brandon and I want to talk about yeah. is how businesses are starting to integrate VR. And this is a great opportunity from from Six Flags' yep. uh, point. I, I mean, I mean, it doesn't feel like a fad anymore. No, it certainly it, seems like this year VR and, and augmented reality seem to be popping up in a lot of places. Yeah, which would lead you to believe that there's going to be a lot more coming in the next couple of years. Yeah. you had mentioned there were some other. Yeah, ways I that actually VR did another there. VR experience this year at Fenway Park, home of the Boston Red Sox. They've installed a virtual reality digital dugout. I think is what they call it. It's okay. in the outfield, and you go back there, and it's in the shape of a baseball dugout, and you put on a headset, and it's got uh, similar to the Six Flags experience. It's this one actually has earphones as well. Okay, and uh, you put it on, and all of a sudden, you have uh, pitchers uh, who are throwing you um, uh, pitches in batting practice. Uh, you're standing right next to batters as they're hitting home runs. It's a pretty cool experience. You really yep. feel like you're on the field and experiencing sort of what it's like to be in a baseball warm-up. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think to Keith's point, it's it's interesting to see these different organizations sort of how can we take this VR technology and really embrace it. And it seems like at this point it's sort of a draw. It's like people, you know, Six Flags is using this as, uh, you know, a marketing tool almost to come mm-hmm. out, come on out to Six mm-hmm. Flags, experience this. Right. And, and I think the Red Sox are doing the same thing. Yeah. What was, I'm just curious real quick on the on the roller coaster before we move on. Um, what was the uptake rate? I mean, was everybody on the roller coaster riding uh, using the goggles? It, it or? is optional. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to do it. You so, don't have to. So some people, if they just want the regular roller coaster ride, they yeah, can opt I think out. They said what 70 percent of people usually do it yeah we were trying to get a sense of i I, when we were there standing and watching other people get on the ride we did kind of ask some people that weren't wearing it we're like hey is this the first time that you're on the ride uh and some of them are like yeah this was the first time and so they wanted to experience the the coaster without the vr before they decided whether or not to do it with the vr uh and i think you know for for kids you have to be 13 in order to wear the vr headsets so they do have that restriction uh, I think a lot of people were, you know, and again, the typical park goer, like sometimes it's hard to tell. It's like younger kids, families, you know, some maybe some people wanted to ride the thrill ride. Some people just didn't want the VR. It should be interesting to see if they expand VR to other parts of the park. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we were asking if they were going to put it on the carousel or if there are other non-coaster rides I would wonder, that you, could, though, you, I mean, could, you could benefit from VR. I mean, all right, so for the carousel, I mean, if I'm thinking of a traditional carousel, what would the VR add to that other than maybe Superman swoops in and grabs your horse or something? Or Yeah, you could just, yeah. you know, you could have animated characters. I mean, they have the Looney Tunes. Um, aspect. I would so think maybe for you're kids riding be a, a lot horse. Of fun. Yeah, you're riding a horse next to Bugs Bunny or something yeah. like that. Well, I think there are opportunities here for augmented reality as well, not a completely yeah. virtual reality, right. but with some of these other rides that aren't as intense, you could maybe add in um, an augmented reality side of it too, where yeah, different comic characters come in and sort of add something to the experience. 
And I don't know, I might have liked that even better on the roller coaster because I felt like one thing that detracted from the experience for me is that it was so immersive that I, I sort of lost my sense of place. Well, when, I, when you first talked about it, I thought, okay, so what you're seeing is like a regular, ro you're seeing the roller coaster and reality around you and that the, the, the cartoon characters were being superimposed on that, but that's not what it no, is. No, it is completely you're, immersive. You're gone you are from completely what you're... in that Marvel world. And you, yeah, and Superman. you don't see a track. DC, no, you start saying Marvel. Oh, so bad about this. Oh. <laughs> no, you don't see a track. Apologies. Yeah, you sorry. don't see a track. Yeah. So yeah. now, the, so the other VR experience that Six Flags and VR Coaster were working on is they have other coasters that aren't branded with Superman. And right. so they have, so that one, they have like a fighter pilot experience. So as you're riding the roller coaster, now you're in a jet and you're fighting off aliens. Okay. So the, the, the VR experience there is, hey, you know, we're, we're saving planet Earth from, from, an, from an alien invasion, which has nothing to do with the original coaster. Right. So I think that the Superman thing is nice because you have a nice storyline around it, but yeah. a regular coaster that maybe you've ridden a few times, you know, now, now you can be in a fighter jet. What? And what I also like is that they get to add other animations for different times of the year. Now it's a software thing. You can improve the ride or change the ride basically by, by adding different animations. Although yeah. physically the, the ride stays the ride's The ride's going to be the same, but no, but your experience would be different every time. Yeah. Now, if you want to get people coming back, if they yeah. like the VR experience, that's a great way to do it. It's interesting you mentioned the, the fighter jet thing because I was thinking, you know, what kinds of real world practical uses would you have for VR? And the first thing that came to mind was like, you know, defense training. I mean, if you've got the military and you can put on this virtual world and, and put pilots in jets or, you know, on the battlefield or whatever, you could train people in right. ways, in experiences that they would not get um, otherwise. And they've, and yeah, and the military has been using VR simulators for years. And augmented reality And augmented too. reality now too. So I think that they'll probably just love that 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 additional non you don't want to get someone in a physical tank right. that costs a million dollars or more. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. I think yeah. there's a lot of opportunities for VR and, and companies to, to use this technology. Keith wrote a story about hotels using it. You can do a virtual tour of the hotel before you go there and real book estate. a room. I could see yeah, real estate. estate, exactly. I just got a pitch this week of a construction company that's using it. And building yeah, it. architecture and even giving a tour to their their um, you know their customers that this is what the, the end product is going to look like uh, college like campuses that. are a huge market like this this company you visit has a list of almost every major university that do virtual tours and you can walk around um but not only with the vr helmet but now with uh on your on either a phone or even just a regular web browser where you can kind of visit the campus if you've got kids that are you know of that age getting ready to go to school right without yeah. having to go there yeah without having to and then obviously gaming visit. is a huge yeah, yeah. industry i mean i think that's sort of the default um, sort of lowest hanging fruit for virtual reality technology is integrating this with the, the gaming systems. It sounds like the sort of thing where, because the technology is sort of now arriving, it starts off in gaming with, with lower resolution or you know the most basic sort of VR, but as the technology catches up and as the software catches up, you're going to have all kinds of, of places you can go without leaving your chair. Right, and as we've talked about as before, well. once content creation yeah. comes out where where you me Brandon and can all just take our own kind of VR um, images and then upload those to friends I, I think that's maybe why Facebook got so interested in this is because they want to see the your Facebook feed filled with VR type things I, I have a feeling this I, I, I'm getting a vision of a dystopic future where instead of always staring at our phones <laughs> we're all walking around with goggles not talking to each other <laughs> in real world I don't know. It's a, it could be. It could, it could go know, either way. 10, 20 years, I think that that could be the case. But, but I think there's going to be enough of us that would be like that still want that human to human but interaction. That, this well, didn't work. Otherwise known as reality. Well, yes, that's people. a good well, idea. Also, old people still like talking to people in person. <laughs> so then why didn't Google Glass And you get your morning work? newspaper too, well, right? Google, What's yeah, that? Why didn't Google Glass work then? I mean, it, these headsets are way bigger than yeah. what Google Glass ever was, and that didn't take off. You'll have to wait, wait for the Apple version. I, It'll be cool. Uh, maybe. Well, right. So the giant v v uh, VR headsets and goggles they're bulky they're goofy. That, that's a one-time use yeah, or, right. or or you know it's that experience. will change though i think the google glass walking around will change if they kind of do an augmented yeah, reality i agree uh in addition you know like the pokemon go thing again to bring yep. the bat that back we should yeah glasses like that he that brandon and i are wearing yeah. if those can if you can augment these 
with instead of the goofy Google Glass thing. I think that yeah. there was just well, aren't there even at. contact lenses now that you can get that have something embedded in them? Possibly. I would wear. <laughs> I, I would wear that. I would do that. Do you want a chip installed in your brain? I do. <laughs> I would. I would like the internet connected <laughs> directly glasses. to the back. Right. I'll be always you constantly like the connected. Matrix, you just kind of I do. Jack just into jack the back. in. That's oh, it. Boy. Okay. That's a, that's a discussion so, for another yeah, day. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on. Yeah. Uh, I think that's going to cover it for VR roller coasters for the day. Um, Keith, Brandon, thanks a lot for being here. That's a wrap. Thank <laughs> you.